tonight I get to talk about one of my favorite topics. I did this a few weeks ago with the Iron Sharpens Iron when we do the Zooms in, uh, up in the New England area. We do them all over. It's funny. We have guys from all over the country now doing them. And uh, this was one of the most popular ones. So Mike said, what do you want to do? And I said, identity. So let's get started. So Mark Twain, Mark Twain said, two of the greatest days was when you were born and when you find your purpose. I think he has it wrong. I think there's three of the most important days. It's when you were born and when you find your identity in Christ, and it's when you find your purpose. See, we have a whole lot of things going on now because we've got a lot of guys that are really struggling with identity, especially coming out of all the world we've been in for the last few years. And it and 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 it has caused a lot of guys to really kind of lose who they are and and kind of what they're about and and all of the whole the whole works. So one of my goals here is to try to help you and get you to understand is, is that you were born an original, don't die a copy. That's that's the whole part of this is, is we have too many men that are willing to just settle for whatever comes next instead of instead of really working and understanding who they really are in Christ. So there's two lies that that men believe about their identity is is I don't have what it takes or I can't. Guys, that's one of Satan's biggest tools is is trying to get you to believe is you don't measure up. And in reality is you do measure up because God created you. We're going to talk more about that later. And the next one is, is that you've made too many mistakes. Guys, your mistakes are only an opportunity to learn lessons along the way. The failure only happens when you give up, when you stop taking steps, when you just stop doing whatever it is that you that you know that God has put on your heart to do. Guys, don't fall for those two, th those two lies from Satan, because he will just keep throwing them up in your face. You don't have what it takes. You don't have what it takes. You don't have, every time you step out to do something, who do you think you are? What do you think you're going to do? You're just, you're just, and, and it just, he just keeps playing that reel. So there's three fears that, that, that will steal a man's identity. The first one is his faces. It's the people around you. The sad part is, is that, and sometimes it's the labels that we give our own selves. It's, it's, it's the labels that others make on us and, and, and we make on ourselves. Guys, don't allow people to tell you who you are and what they think you should become. Because I can tell you, and I've learned this the hard way, there are plenty of people who've never done anything willing to tell you how to do something. <laughs> don't fall for it, okay? Don't do it. The next one is the fences. It's the barriers that we put around ourselves. Men, you're only confined by the walls that you build around your own self. You're not confined by anything else. You're only confined by the walls that you build around yourself. Guys, don't build walls. Don't allow the walls to be built. And here's the big one for most men. It's called failure. Most of the times we feel like, okay, we failed too many times. Guys, like I said, failure only happens when you give up. Don't ever give up. God has got something amazing planned for your life. He's got something that is just sitting here waiting for you to grasp. And he's just, and, and once you do, it's just like the whole world opens up. I mean, I'm sitting, I'm sitting in, in, a, in a church, I'm helping a pastor and everything else. And God's been trying, was trying to start this ministry over here. And I was like, you know, well, if I do this, I'm going to be gone and I won't be here to help. And I won't be able to here to do my part. And I won't be, you know, just just a thousand excuses, just always rolling. And so there was something that happened in the church that that was really bad. And um, so my family and all, we talked about it and we left and we went to we went to another church. And as soon as we walked through the door of the other church, I stood there and I looked around and I, and I this is here. Are the words that came out of my mouth is, is they don't need me here. And it's like God hit me with a two by four and he goes, I brought you here. If I didn't, if they didn't need you here, I would have never put you here. And I'm like, okay. 
So I went in and I talked to the pastor and everything else. And, and, and he said, I want you to build a men's ministry here, but I want you to take six months and do nothing. I want you to just learn people and learn, you know, get, get accustomed to what we do and how we do things. It was just an amazing journey, but I see, I could allow the failure from the last church. I could allow the fences and I could allow the faces and everything else to prevent me from stepping out into what God had called me for. So guys, don't, don't allow these things to keep working. When you feel these things coming on you, you got to shut them down. You have to shut them down and you have to find tools. You have to have accountability people. I meet with mine on Tuesday mornings. You know, the first questions out of your mouth is, is how you doing? Are you staying on track? You know, and that's, that's where we start because if, if you're not doing well, you know, I, I tell people all the time is, is and, I'll, and I'll tell you here a little bit, proper preparation prevents poor performance, guys. If you're not getting up in the morning preparing, if you're not getting ready to, and, and, and getting something in you before you walk out of the door, you're a sitting duck for Satan all day long. Don't, don't do that. So let's look at Psalms 139, 14, 14 through 16. This is one of my absolute favorite verses. I, I just, I love it. But he says, for you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful and I know them full well. Here's the part that I just, I just really, really like. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body and all the days ordained for me were written in the book before even one of them came to be. Guys, before you were even born, God knew you. God loves you. God put you in a place. He ordained all of your days. Yeah, even your stuck on stupid moments. He was there. He didn't miss any of them. Okay. He, he just, but I have learned guys is, is God will take your stuck on stupid moments and give them a story. And a lot of times that story is a story that really unlocks other people's prison doors for them. So let's look at, uh, let's look at identity, just the acronym identity. Mike sent out the handouts earlier. I don't know whether you have them, but we're just going to basically write the word identity down a piece of paper. So the first one is, is individual. You are your own person. You are one of a kind. Guys, stop being what others say you are and stop being what others want you to be. God created you to be you. He put your own set of gifts, your own set of talents, your own set of abilities inside of you. He created you for something that only you can do. And he's sitting here just waiting enough for you to value it, enough to live it out, to step out into it and to move into it. You know, I, I go back and I look at my life. If it hadn't been for baseball, I'd still be in, I'd still be in high school, guys. You know, I mean, I just, I didn't take school seriously. I didn't go to college. I didn't do any of this stuff. And all of a sudden, God takes me at 40 years old and says, okay, this is where I want you right here. You played ball all your life. The whole Your whole life that you played ball, I was training you for men's ministry. On all the teams you played on, I was training you for men's ministry. I was putting you around some of the worst. I was putting you around all kinds of people, all kinds of different guys. I have been training you this whole time. Guys, understand that God wants to take you right where you are, all your mistakes, all your problems, all your issues, and he wants to put them together, just like it said in Psalms, all the days were ordained before even one of them came to be. Guys, think about that. You are God's greatest workmanship. Ephesians 2.10 says, for you are my workmanship. Think about that. In some translations, it says you're his handiwork. You're his masterpiece. Guys, that is so awesome. Y'all got the beach right down there. You go look at the beach, at the ocean, at the moon, the mountain, the stars, and how nice and how awesome all of that stuff is. But he says when he created you, he created you his best. 
Think about when you took your first breath over in Genesis. It says when Adam breathed, when, 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 when he made Adam, he breathed into Adam. Guys, I imagine that God does the same thing for every one of us. When we take our first breath, we're breathing the very breath that God breathed in us. That's how much he loves us. That's how much he cares for us. The D is, is don't let your past choices define you. Guys, your past is only the stepping stones to your purpose and to, and, and, and to your destiny. That's all it is. That, that is all that is for. God will take all of your past, all of your pain, and, and give it a purpose when you say, here I am, God. Here I am. I go back and I look at my life and I look at, at how many mistakes I've made and how much I messed up and everything else. And, you know, I was telling, I was telling Brian Doyle this morning at our staff meeting, I told him, you know, I, 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 I know this is going to sound bad, but the guys that come, that, that, that come across my path or the tattoo guys or the guys that aren't making it, the guys that, the guys that are struggling, you know, I don't get very many perfect Christians like Brian Doyle does. You know, I, I get, I get the guys that are really being hammered by life. And, you know, he was talking and I said, yeah, I said, um, the sad part today is, is I said, there are a lot of men that are married that have wives that have family, but they also have a girlfriend. And he goes, I can't even imagine that. And I go, I'm working with one right now. Okay. <laughs> I'm just telling you. You know, but the best part about all of this is, is as soon as we can get him back on track, back where he needs to be, it's going to be awesome. So guys, don't allow your past to define you. Allow it to give, allow it to unlock your purpose. Look around who God's putting around you. Look around the people that God is sending your way. It is amazing of what God will do when you give it to him. The E is experiences. Learn and grow from your mistakes, guys. They're, they're, some of your greatest lessons will come from your obstacles that were put in your way. When you can learn from your mistakes, and the first thing happens is, is you stop making them. But the best part is, is then you start learning tools on how to not do that so you can pass those along. Guys, Learn every day. Get up in the morning. I, I, I tell the guys that I coach, I said, I want you to write one scripture verse down on a post-it note before you walk out of the door every morning. I want you to put it in your pocket. And as you go through the day, reach in your pocket. When you feel it, look at it and allow God to start unpacking it in your life. Just allow him to just start start speaking it to you just to get on it. You know, the Bible says a lot of times, meditate on it, you know, and, and this is what we have to do. And, you know, it's amazing of how God will speak to you and God will show you that little point that's in that scripture that you just need, that, that, that you need. So I challenge you to do the same thing. Just take a verse and put it on a post-it note. When you walk out of the door, stick in your pocket and let God download it every day. Men, we need to be prepared for battle before the battle arrives. Don't wait. Don't wait. Get prepared every single day. The end is never forget there are people always watching you. Guys, there are people that are watching you, how you handle situations, how you handle your kids, how you talk to your wife. They're watching everything you do every day. They're watching you when you go to the doctor and you get a bad report. Mike doesn't even know this yet, but I went to the doctor a few months ago and I found out they said, well, you've got prostate cancer. And I was like, great. And they looked at me and they go, do what? I go, it's for purpose. I guess we'll figure it all out. So I just finished the biopsies and all the other stuff. And, you know, so, and fortunate enough, it's very small right now. And so I went in and they said, okay, when you leave, you're going to have this, you're going to have this, you're going to have this. And by the way, you need to pee before four o'clock. So I went in, they did everything, walked back out. I was getting ready to, they were taking me to the car and I said, I've got to go to the bathroom. I said, if I don't go to the bathroom, I said, I'm not going to make it home. And the nurse looked at me like I was on Fruit Loops. 
And she said, do what? She said, this never happens. And I said, I'm not never, okay? Um, you you got to understand, I'm going through this journey for a purpose, and I don't know what this purpose is yet, but we'll figure it out along the way. I go into the bathroom, nothing. Neither one of the three, nothing. She goes, okay, did you have, I said, nope, nothing. We walked to the car and she was asking me what I did along the way. And she says, yeah, my husband and I are stuck in a rut. And, and I said, what do you mean? She said, we're just stuck in a rut. We're not in a church. We need to get into a church. We need to do this. We need to do that, blah, 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 blah. And I reached up on the dashboard and I had a book called Living Out of the Rut that I wrote and I handed it to her. Coincidence? Right. I handed her the book and she took the book and then she looked at me and she says, can I pray for you? Guys, it was so cool because the words that she prayed are the exact words that my wife and I have been praying. Just bam, 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 bam. So awesome. So I went back in um, the other day to to the surgical center so they could do a little process so I, they could get locations and everything else. Saw her there. She came over to the bed and she's standing there and she says, I want to thank you. She says, my husband and I are now in a church. We love the church we're in. It's just amazing, guys, of how God will take what you're going through and what's happening in your life and how you handle life to impact the lives of others. Guys, don't, don't run from it. Embrace it, okay? Just embrace it. You never know that word that you will say or anything else that is going to make a difference in somebody's life. I had a little low, short, little old black lady one day tell me, she says, Rex, she says, you will never look into a pair of eyes that God doesn't love. Sometimes it's hard to look into some eyes, I can tell you, okay? You know, because it's just like no way I can love them. But it's funny is, is of how, what God will do in those situations. Guys, never forget somebody's always watching you. In 1 Timothy 4.12, this is written for the youth, but I'm going to read it to you anyhow. He says, don't let anyone look down on you because you're young or old. I added that. Uh, but set an example for believers in speech and conduct and love and faith and impurity. Guys, sometimes you're the only Bible that people are reading. Okay, make sure they're reading the right pages. The T is, is take time for yourself to grow every day. Guys, you need to have your time. You need to have time where you get away with you. I don't care how long it is or whatever it is, but you just can't keep going every day in this rat race that you get caught up in. Eventually, the rat race is going to catch you. You know, I, I tell my son all the time, I said, if you don't slow down from time to time, you're going to be slowed down. You know, now he's starting to take that advice to, to heart now. But guys, take time for yourself every day. Prioritize your day instead of allowing your day to prioritize you. Guys, if you're not careful, your day will prioritize you. And next thing you know is, is you're getting home late. You're missing out on family functions. You're missing out on kids' activities. You're missing out on life. You're missing out on small groups. You're just missing out on a lot of things. Guys, don't do that. Okay? Stop procrastinating. Start prioritizing and get your day in right order. The I is, is inspect your life often. This is hard, man. We need to be looking at our lives often. I, I have a post-it note beside my bed and every night and, and the guys that I coach, I get them to do the same thing. Two questions that are on that post-it note is, is what, what, what would I have done differently today? Okay. And whose life did I impact today? And, and, and I just want those because every night before I go to bed, I look at those things and I go, okay, what did I do that I needed to change? And did I really impact somebody's life? Did I say something, you know, did I do something or whatever that made a difference in somebody's life today? Whether it's a checker by getting a cup of coffee whether it's somebody else, you know, I tell you, you, you be surprised. You go stand in line, to get a cup of coffee and you'll be surprised how many people that will never, ever speak to that red person behind that register. They'll walk up and they'll do their tap and pay and out of the door, they're gone. They will never say hi. They will never speak to them or they will never look them in the eye. It is amazing, man. 
but but inspect your life often. Make sure you're staying on track. The next one is, is trust God. Trust God has a plan for your life, men. Jeremiah 1, 5, he says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. In Jeremiah's case, he was appointed as a prophet to the nation. Every one of you has, has a line right there. He says, you know, I'll use Jeremy. Jeremy, before you were born in your mother's womb, I knew you. I set you apart, and I appointed you as. And Jeremy has a blank that one day, I hope he gets to fill it out. Every one of you has a blank sitting right there that you get to fill out. It is so cool, man. And the last one is, is the why is, is you really are God's best. I told you Ephesians 2.10. Guys, you really are God's best. I look at when Jesus was born, when he came up out of the water, there was that voice that says, this is my son whom I love and whom I'm well pleased. Man, I believe every single morning when you wake up, God says, good morning, son, whom I love. And I just want to let you know I'm well pleased with you. Guys, the God of the heavens, the God of the universe, the God that's in our hearts, the God, the, the, the God that we trust, he loves us that much where when we wake up, he has that moment with us. But the problem is, is most of us, the alarm goes off and we hit our feet running and we never just lay in bed and just have that little moment of communication with God. I want to challenge you tomorrow morning when you wake up, when that alarm goes off, just lay there for 60 seconds and just quiet me and just say, good morning, God. Use me today to impact somebody's life. And watch what happens in your life. Guys, you are created special. You are created one of a kind. God doesn't make mistakes. And he never says oops. Guys, don't fall for the lies of Satan. Step into your identity. When you step into your identity, you're going to find your real purpose. I'm doing purpose tomorrow night with the Iron Sharpens Iron group. It's guys have just been requesting it but guys let me close with a story is 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 mr smith he went to heaven and as he got to heaven peter was there and peter met him and he was walking all around showing him all around and all of a sudden he looked over and he saw this big huge building over off to the far side and he it just kind of looked out of place and you know we always want to go to the places that look weird so Mr. Smith takes off running and Peter's trying to catch him. And he, Mr. Smith gets to the door and he says, don't, don't go in there. Don't, don't go in there. Mr. Smith opened it up and inside there's rows and rows and rows of white boxes with red ribbons. Mr. Smith walks down the aisle and he finds the one with his name on it. And Peter's walking up behind him. About the time he reaches up and he grabs the box and he pulls it out. And he slides the ribbon off at the end and he opens it up. And he looks inside and he was just so amazed, just so amazed. And Peter turned around. He looked at Peter and he says, what is this? He said, this is everything that God had planned for your life that you never did. Guys, God has made you. God has created you and God has given you a purpose. Don't be a Mr. Smith and miss out on everything God has planned for you. Men, we need to leave a mark and not a scar. So one of the questions that I'm going to ask when we get off of this is, is which question, which, which letter hit you the most and which letter do you need to work on the most? So let's pray. Dear God, I just thank you for these men. I thank you for what you're doing in their lives and in my life. Continue to work and move and just continue to bless them and open up doors for them. 